All right, we're gonna get back to it here, uh, putting this uh, 924 turbo engine back together. Um, last video, I got quite a few of the accessories on. Uh, let's take a look, see if I, I think the last thing was the um, housing for the thermostat, which really sucked because uh, that hose had to be bent and everything. I um, think I covered this. We got the distributor housing on, ignition distributor, and the this is a water temperature sensor, a spigot, We've got two spigots, and then the oil pressure sender. So this morning I want to get this um, pulley back on for the belts. So it does timing belt and AC compressor and uh, alternator. Now, when I pulled this, um, I remember having a lot of problems because this bolt on the nose was extremely tight. I'll look up the torque specs on it. So now I've been using that bolt to turn the crank it's in there a little ways, just a tiny bit snug, but I don't want it, the crank to spin because you've got the cam on there and it's interference design, so you don't want your the open valves colliding with the tops of the pistons. So what I'm going to have to do is I put a couple of flywheel uh, bolts on the crank and I'll put a bar in there to hold the crank steady while I pull that big bolt. That's one thing. The other thing I'm noticing, and I didn't notice this, this um, pulley assembly is supposed to come off of that gear. And definitely didn't notice this roll pin, which looks like it's been sheared so in the nose of that crank there's a roll pin inside of it probably note there's also another pin here that keeps the pulley assembly from spinning on the gear i guess oh uh it's an index because this is weighted so they've balanced that at the factory so that would make you put the pulley assembly back on the gear in the proper orientation. So the first step is to get the pulley assembly off the gear. Hopefully a couple of taps with a mallet will make it pop off. Um, I don't see anything else that's holding it on, uh, but more to come. Yeah, just a couple taps, and uh, from this side, and that popped out the gear. The, this pin, the remnant came out pretty easy, and it's it's a one eighth or three millimeter roll pin. Uh, it wasn't in there very deep, frankly. Uh, here, not so much. Uh, of course, all my one-eighth drill bits are dull, so, uh, and I suspect that one goes in there pretty deep. I mean, probably at least a quarter inch. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get another set of drill bits and extract that. So, yeah, it's always something. All right, to be continued. So Lowe's had some roll pins, uh, actually 530 seconds uh, is better. Too long though, I measured the depth uh, after I extracted what was remaining of the old pin with my caliper and it's only about 10 meters. 10 millimeters, excuse me, five millimeters in the crank and five into the to the pulley. So uh, yeah, I had to 
cut a pin and then bevel the edges and now I'll stick that in the crank and see if we can get this together. Alright, got that in. Alright, so it calls for 180 foot pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that high. I just put my longest bar on there. And then again, I had to uh, put a bar on the on the crank on the back side to keep it from spinning. And I just cranked the living hell out of it. So uh, I think it's going to be fine. Also, when you're spinning the engine with a with a wrench, you're just torquing it even more. So there's always that. Okay, so. I got the uh, pulley on and uh, went ahead and installed the timing belt and the eccentric uh, tensioning pulley. So now I think I'm ready to roll this thing over um, and see if it's, you know, is it 180 degrees off? I don't know. I did put a mark on it at some point. But I can't remember if that was pointing down or pointing up. <laughs> so, which would be 180 degrees off, right? So, uh, if I go slow, if the valves are going to collide, I'll feel them. Uh, I've done that on a 928 before, and you can you can definitely feel the valves whenever they start to uh, interfere with the piston tops. So. Uh, I was also looking at the back of the crank. There should be a pin associated with the uh, flywheel. I'm going to pull that out and take a look at that because that'll that'll help clue me in uh, whether I'm top dead center or not. Okay, so I double checked uh, day five of the teardown, and it clearly shows. This pulley with that scribe on it in the down position. And uh, I rotated the crank. Nothing's interfering. Uh, what I did find out, and this is pretty weird, uh, is that the flywheel, unlike the Haynes book, has a, like a divot in it for alignment mark. Whereas in the book, it shows like two lines. Uh, there is a corresponding line on the crank. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, God. It's back in there. Yeah, you can barely see it up above that bolt. Uh, so, yeah, it's just odd that there would be two different types of alignment marks. But, you know, that's Porsche for you. So, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm at a good stopping point for today. Um, I'm going to review the video a little bit more. I think there's some other ancillary stuff I can get on here. Uh, and, um, you know, still waiting on that O-ring uh, for, for that turbo mount. And um, then I'll definitely be able to start plowing forward. So, uh, another bit done. Thanks for watching. All right, here's a bonus segment. Uh, to adjust the valves, uh, tap it, that is, good grief. I went, stopped by Harbor Freight, and I've got a set of these uh, ball socket hex keys metric. Um, the key here is the small ones are quarter inch drive. Now they're too long in the state they're in. So what you're looking for is a three millimeter. And what I did is I took it to a vise. I put it in a vise and I used a punch and I punched the actual bit out of it. I cut maybe half an inch off of it to make it the exact length I needed to adjust the valves. And it actually works quite nicely. So, just go in, 
right there and you're in there i mean it's that easy so whenever the um valves are closed the tappets will move about because you're supposed to have a gap there and that's the reason haynes wants you to adjust the screws all the way out because it'll make um even looser so on all the tappets i had to screw them in at least at least five six turns clicks and you'll hear an audible click and uh yeah this worked quite nicely uh fits right in there you got to turn the tap it a little here and there to kind of get it to fit but uh, aside from going out and buying a special tool you know this set of hex bits was you know 25 bucks or whatever uh and i'm burning through them all the time so anyway just thought you guys want to know that's how you get the valves done everything's lining up uh and i'm very helpful about this